Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Spirits and Ghost Stories. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons. And I'm Carly Byrne. Week 57. Week 57, we did it. It's, I can't believe we actually got here. Happy October, everybody. We are not in a scary mask because we thought tonight, because we're lazy and a little bit depressed, we're going to go with our own faces because they're probably scary enough. Um, Yes, but notice the lighting. Notice the lighting. The lighting is important for getting the haunted faces because this is also a theme for tonight's story. It's to put us in the mood. For what type of mood, Miss Bird? For scary campfire stories. Ooh. Ooh. So that is the tale of what we're going to go with tonight. And with that... (laughs) With that? With that, campfires remind me of the fall season, right? Yeah. And that also reminds me of alcohol, which I need tonight. Tom, what are we drinking tonight? Fall spritzer. And guys, you know usually Carly, with her eloquent voice, usually describes the recipe to you. And the recipe that I have... Hold on. Wait a minute. Um, the, 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 <coughs> the light you're shining on your face is like way too bright. The, you can like hold it down. I don't think you should be blinding yourself at the moment. Okay, there I you can't go. fucking see. Yeah, and it's hard stop to it. Stuff. That's why I'm trying to help you. So the recipe for this delectable beverage that she made for us tonight... Is extremely confusing. It's so complicated, y'all. It really is. I don't know. I got but home. But it's also delicious. So. I got home from work and I started talking here with all of you. And she put a beverage in my hand. We've all had hard days of work. And you're like, listen, I just want something to drink. That's fine. I'll drink it. I don't care what it is. It could be roofied. I don't care. And this is what it was. One bottle of Arapyrol. Here he goes. 10 ounces of Bourbon. One bottle of Champagne. Eight ounces of of honey syrup. That's the sweetness I heard. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. Mm-hmm. 16 ounces of sparkling grapefruit water soda. I tasted the grapefruit, not the bubbly soda. So that's okay. You're failing there. Three sticks of fresh rosemary. There was no sticks because I know we have rosemary in our garden. That's where we got it from. Good guy, shout out. You should have your own garden. One grapefruit slice. I thought that was an orange. That no. makes sense now. Okay, cool. It's like a whole half. And then actually, place the half. rosemary in for a while. I know you didn't do that, but you did the syrup. We did have the syrup there with warm water and honey. You're supposed to basically make it marinade. And then you shake it up that. together. That is really good. The key is, guys, bourbon makes things better. Always remember that. That is my attempt at the beverage of the day. But again, in the episode description. It will be included. will be it. Absolutely. In episode description. Hello. Carly. What do you got going on this weekend? This weekend? I've got pony things to do, Tom. What pony things? Uh, we are going to a local pairs competition Ooh. called the Boo Bash because Boo. <laughs> How do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> because Boo. Um, so is it like a pairs competition or an individuals? It's a pairs competition on Saturday and an individuals on Sunday. Wait, what? Yeah. So it's a single day? So it's both. So Saturdays a pairs and Sundays and individuals. Wait, so you get to do both. How do they score it? The finals will be on Saturday. So the finals for the pairs is on Saturday and the finals for the individuals is on so Sunday. So it's a single day. It's it's two separate things. You paid for it separately, but it all happens at the same location. Gotcha. So is it do you ride twice each day? For Saturday you ride twice and Sunday I think you ride twice. The schedule hasn't been released yet, so I'm not quite sure. Who does the scheduling? Your sister? <laughs> She's going to release it. Huge shout tomorrow. out to the turn director there. Uh, make sure you get that up there. It's, it's a great surprise. Everyone is like waiting to hear back from you, by the way. Yeah. Um, but no, I love you, Jen. So She's also my partner. I was, oh, way. fuck. That's my next question. <laughs> riding with your sister yeah oh my god i knew you didn't know that she's ah, riding hero too yeah, so I it's not. gonna be real exciting what's the name of your team we haven't decided but we're wearing little sweatshirts with skulls holding a cup of coffee i forget what the sweatshirt says and then i was thinking about putting like a cute little um okay make your drink louder please i'm sorry I'm just, I was just trying to deal with this like emotional I was thinking distress. about putting like this skull uh, like pa- spray paint like a skull on Remington's booty like on either side please put it on his forehead 
Now, that wouldn't be pointless because this forelock is so massive that it just would cover it. I love how she said that, and I don't think you guys saw this, but you will when I edit this shit, is her eye roll of like, listen, his hair is like so amazing. Like we could do that, but it would be pointless because like his his bangs are so fluffy. You wouldn't be able to see it. Please follow her on Instagram. I think the horse's name is like Fuzzbutt. It's called, his name is Remington the Fuzzbutt or Rim, Fuzzbutt. Remy, Remy Fuzzbutt, I think. And that's F U Z Z B U T T. I will make sure the horse's Instagram is linked in the episode description. Oh my gosh. From now on, that, you can actually follow him. I haven't posted anything there for a long time. When was the last time you posted? Probably like six months ago. Yeah, I'm telling you. I've been, I've been busy. Running, listen, listen, helping this, run two podcasts. This woman is shit. so busy that she can't literally use her thumb for five seconds to post a video. I posted phone. on my main channel. I know. I Happy saw Carly it. Birdie. So follow her at Happy Carly Birdie for all your fuzzbutt things yeah. if you would like it. Carly, I'm public, so y'all can watch any of my videos. We have a nice little theme going tonight. We have all these candles. We have a red light. Usually we don't go with red. And you'll see it's going to be a lot more red on the re-upload. Um, we have our guest of characters here. And I have this light that I'm supposed to shine in my face. So what? <laughs> what? You know, like whenever you sit around a campfire, and usually it, you know, it's really dark outside and people kind of hold their flashlights under their faces when, when they're like telling stories so that they everybody can see their faces. You know Absolutely, what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. So that's the theme that we're going on. That's That was my great... <laughs> fantastic idea for tonight i love it i love cataracts too so carly stop, just stop shining in your face though people don't do that you dingus have you ever been to a campfire mm, no. have you ever been to camp i was homeschooled i was i've been to camp many times but i was also it was always religious camp well shit all right well you have one on me lots of bible studies so anyway carly what is our story for tonight all right so i've got a couple short stories for you the first short story is called The Kidnapping Ghost. Ooh. Ooh. In 1998, Joe relocated from California to Georgia to work as a manager at an auto body shop with his cousin. Soon, after Joe's brother followed him to the Peach State and rented a small house built in the late 1800s. It looked nice from the outside, but it didn't feel right from the inside, Joe said. Things were off from the moment he helped his brother move into the house. I walked into the house and I went, oh man. The hair stood up on the back of my neck and I just felt ill at ease, like this place isn't cool at all. What? (sighs) Moments later, while carrying items into the bedroom, Joe says he heard whispering. Ooh. A heated whispering, almost like an argument between two people that seemed to be hovering in the top of the ceiling area of the room, he added. Wow. Joe ran out of the room and asked his brother if he'd felt something off about the house, too. His brother had picked up on the vibe, but after praying on it, his brother said he felt that things would be all right. As long as you're good, Joe... Joe said, I'm not good, but I'm going to help you. I'm, uh, but I'm going home and I probably won't come back here. (laughs) So he's like, I'll help you out if you need to, but also I'm not going to hang out. In the weeks that followed, there were more unusual occurrences, including a terrifying event in which Joe's eight-year-old nephew was taking a bath and sat up to find an elderly man in the tub with him. It took about two days to calm him down, and he never took baths after that. After falling asleep on the couch one night, Joe's brother awoke to find an elderly man and woman seated on either side of him, arguing back and forth over whether or not they were going to allow the brother and his family to remain in the home. The kicker, however, was when Joe's brother asked to borrow his truck one afternoon. After receiving word that his four-year-old daughter had been found wandering along a busy road by herself with her hand up in the air, police and other agencies 
were called in to investigate, and when asked, the four-year-old girl explained she'd just gone for a stroll with the old lady. Mm. What old lady? Joe's brother asked. The old lady that lives here, his daughter replied. She just wanted to go for a walk, so we went for a walk. The front door was far too heavy for a four-year-old to open, so everyone was perplexed as how she was able to leave. The old lady opened the door, and then we petted the dog for a little bit, and then we went for a walk, she explained. I'm sorry. (laughs) It's going to kill the vibe. I love it. Like, And then we petted the dog. It's like... I just, that's, just, like, that's how four-year-olds talk. But in any like slasher movie, you could be like, and we were being chased, but then we stopped to pet the dog. And then we went on with whatever we're doing. Like there's like this pause in the story. The tension is like snapped in this four-year-old's mind. It's like all the shit was happening, but then. But it's still creepy to think that okay. she thought she was petting the dog with an old lady. That's a ghost. Meanwhile, you guys cannot hear it because of the audio equipment we have, and that I'm going to edit probably out in post. There's a dog upstairs above us that's thudding his head and scratching. Because he's because... very upset that we are not in bed yet. Yes, he's very upset. And so I think it's funny, too. It's like He's like thudding and like being in a term of danger. Anyway, continue. Anyway, the story is pretty much over. You killed the vibe. But it goes on to say, she was so genuine and honest that as a four-year-old that he couldn't call her a liar. Shortly after, his brother moved out of the house and never went back. Joe still drives by the house nearly every day. It looks like a perfectly normal, acceptable house, except for what's inside. And that was the tale of the kidnapping ghost. I like a ghost with morals. And a compass. I like that. Like, I was going to like, ah, I'm going to get you. But then it's like. That's random. I like ghosts with morals and a compass. It's like he was going to kidnap her. And then he's like. But it did. It did kidnap her. What the heck did you do? I didn't think it kidnapped her. Hold on. It's okay. It's okay. Just don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. The ghost did kip- kidnap her. Wait, what? They were walking down the street. I thought the ghost didn't kidnap her. No, she was walking down the street with the ghost. No, she's walking down the street with the dog. No, with the ghost. Holy shit. I am You so are drunk. not listening. I'm no, I'm just inebriated. There's a huge difference there. Mm-hmm. I, I heard dog petting and I was like, okay, this is cool. The dog saved her. She said, no, we were petting the dog and then we went for a walk. So That's he- why the girl's hand was up in the air. She was holding the ghost lady's hand. So she's a dumb bitch. Got it. That's depressing. It's a four-year-old kid. But she pet the dog. What do you mean? Where's the dog? At home. So the dog didn't help her? No. It was a Jojo. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. Is it <laughs> happy to just be involved? We- <laughs> <laughs> We have a dog that, um, and when this when this episode debuts, the Jeffrey Dahmer Netflix <laughs> series is still a big thing. Dahmer could come to the house and be like, "Oh hi, how are you doing?" And he's like, "All right, they're upstairs. Good luck." Yep. And doesn't just thud the head back down. Let me know if you need my help with anything. He might wolf every now and then, and we like he goes, he goes oof, and oof. we think it's a big deal. It's That's like, it. Are you trying to like protect us? Right. It feels like you're trying, but you don't want to be like like I don't know like bored with it right it's kind of funny um that's a good story the dog's really nice what type of dog was it it didn't say but i have another story Ooh. prepare yourselves for the tale of the seventh barn Ooh. the seventh barn or also known as the seven barns is a scary urban legend about a haunted barn in drumroll ohio oh that's where we're going next week Huge shout out to you guys you know who you are this is believed to have been the scene of a grisly murder of an entire family there was a wealthy farmer who owned a lot of land in ohio he built a new barn on his property every time his wife had a baby clearly they were not suffering from inflation He named the barns after each of his children, and by the time this story takes place, 
They had had six kids and were expecting number seven. Gotta love the Catholics. However, the farmer's wife died in childbirth, and so did her unborn baby. The farmer went insane with grief and couldn't tend to his farm. The family had no money, and the farm started going under. They say that one night, in the depths of his madness and despair, the farmer took an axe and led each of his children out to the barns where he murdered them, one by one. He buried each of their bodies in the six barns that had been named after them. Then, Holy the farmer fuck. went to the seventh barn, where he hung himself. As the story goes, all of the barns were eventually torn down, and the land was sold off. All except for the seventh barn. Nobody wanted to buy the land because of what had happened there. So it was abandoned, and soon fell into disrepair. They say if you go to that barn at night, you can see the ghost of the farmer hanging from the rafters, his body swinging back and forth in the wind, dwelling on his terrible crime for all eternity. No one was really sure where the seventh barn was located, although it was definitely in Ohio. Some said it was the Crans farm in the valley, and others said it was Topo, the world in Northampton. In 1997, a local Ohio teacher claimed that after a lot of research, he had finally managed to track down the real location of the infamous seventh barn. He said that none of the barns had ever actually been torn down. The land had just been divided up and sold off and the barns had simply been incorporated into the neighboring farms. According to the teacher, he was able to pinpoint the correct location because of all the barns on neighboring properties had nameplates above their doors with the names of the children engraved on them. The teacher and his son set out at night to visit the barn, bringing a video camera with them in the hopes of capturing some paranormal activity. The next morning, the teacher's wife reported her husband and son missing. Police found their bodies, found their abandoned car by the roadside. While searching for the area, they entered the barn in a nearby field and found the dead bodies of the teacher and his son hanging from the rafters. And that was the tale of the seventh barn. Don't go out looking for that barn, especially at night. That's a good story. That's, that's a really good story. Um, question, though. I, I do love how, like, the seventh barn is where people are like, well, we can't get that land. It's like, you know, there were, like, multiple children executed in these other barns. Like, listen, the land, though, and the value, it's fantastic. It's but it's not the murderer. But, so, but still, it's like, listen, what happened here? A kid was murdered. That's fine. What happened here? A kid was murdered. That's fine. What happened here? A murderer hanged himself. Whoa. Listen, <laughs> this is where we draw the line. This is where we draw the line on you know the, the acquisition of real estate. Um, but that's... Is that like reverse po postmortem depression or whatever? The reverse postmortem? What? No. Because like women... It's will, called grief. No, because women will kill themselves and their children like a lot of times. When you okay. get sad. Okay. But you don't really hear about it in reverse like that. No, men don't really have that because it's a chemical imbalance. Well, apparently this guy had that chemical imbalance. His wife died. I'm thinking I'm going to drown kids because of it, though. Good for you. You're not a psychopath. Huge shout out. Whoop, whoop. Represent. I'm, I'm sane. I'm on the spectrum. I'm not on the spectrum. <laughs> Sorry. Could you next story? <laughs> All right, here's the final story for the evening. Prepare yourselves for the tale of the Axe Murder Hollow. Susan and Ned were driving through a wooded, empty section of the highway. Lightning flashed, thunder roared, and the sky went dark in the torrential downpour. We'd better stop, said Susan. Ned nodded his head in agreement. He stepped on the brake, and suddenly the car started to slide on the slick pavement. They plunged off the road and slid to a halt at the bottom of an incline. 
Pale and shaking, Ned quickly turned to check to see if Susan was all right. When she nodded, Ned relaxed and looked through the rain-soaked windows. I'm going to see how bad it is, he told Susan, and and went out into the storm and went out into the storm. She saw his blurry figure in the headlight, walking around the front of the car. A moment later, he jumped in beside her, soaking wet. The car is not badly damaged, but we're wheels deep in mud, he said. I'm going to have to go for help. Susan swallowed nervously. There would be no quick rescue here. He told her to turn off the headlights and lock the doors until he returned. Although Ned hadn't said the name aloud, they both knew what he'd been thinking when he told her to lock the car. This was a place where a man had once taken an axe and hacked his wife to death in a jealous rage over an alleged affair. Mm. Supposedly, the axe-wielding spirit of the husband continued to haunt this section of the road called Axe Murder Hollow. Well. <laughs> Outside the car, Susan heard a shriek, a loud thump, and a strange gurgling noise. But she couldn't see anything in the darkness. Frightened, she shrank down into her seat. She sat in silence for a while. Then she noticed another sound. Bump. 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 It was a soft sound, like something being blown by the wind. Suddenly, the car was illuminated by a bright light. An official-sounding voice told her to get out of the car. Ned must have found the police officer. Susan unlocked the door and stepped out of the car. As her eyes adjusted to the bright light, she saw it. Hanging by his feet from the tree next to the car was the dead body of Ned. His bloody throat had been cut so deep that he was nearly deca decapitated. The wind swung the corpse back and forth so that it thumped against the tree. Bump. 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 Susan screamed and ran toward the voice and the light. As she drew close, she realized the light was not coming from a flashlight. Standing there was the glowing figure of a man with a smile on his face and a large, solid, and definitely real axe in his hand. She backed away from the glowing figure until she bumped into the car. Playing around when my back was turned, the ghost whispered, stroking the sharp blade of the axe with his fingers. You've been very naughty. The last thing she saw was the glint of the axe blade in the eerie, incandescent light. And that was the tale of the Axe Murder Hollow. Jesus Christ. Wow. Campy for you? That is campy. That, that, that is July and October right there, guys. That is campy as shit. Oh, my God. You know what I'm really feeling? is like, we need some Dean Winchester right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've been watching Supernatural. <laughs> It's just I I let it play on the back in the background while I like eat dinner or like fix dinner or whatever. Like I'm not really watching watching it, but I'm just listening yeah. to Sam and Dean. Sam, Dean. <laughs> That's how to say it too. Sam, Dean, <laughs> Dean. <laughs> I love it. I love Supernatural. Also, by the way, guys, I just found they actually have an animated show that they did for like one year, one Whoa. season. Whoa. Whoa. And they actually like donated their voices to it. So like I They donated their voices, their vocal cords. Do they cords. say they donated or like what do they say? Like they lent their voices? Like so Sold? I don't know. How do they say that? Contracted? Yeah. What anyway, the point is like it's their voices in the show, which is pretty cool. But it has that anime like Japanese feel, which is pretty yeah, cool. That's so, way better. Cannot wait to see that. With their voices and I'm supposed to know what I meant. I feel like we can get more horror-ish with that. So I think that was pretty cool about the idea. Concept is good, but we'll let you know about the execution. So All right. That was really good. So but don't you have something for us? I do, and I'm so excited because guys, we know why you're here, you filthy bastards. You're not here for the scary stories. Nope. You're here for basically what we find online. And ladies and gentlemen, today we have a good one for you for scary stuff. 
in the news. Scary do, do, stuff do, do, of do, the do. news. Scary stuff of the news. Uh, 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 uh. Today, Tommy, what do you have for us? Well, you sick sons of bitches. I have a good one for you that is hilarious, I think, and you're going to probably love it too. It's called The Ghost Could Sell More Beer and Wings, but <laughs> Charlotte Seems Spooked. Here's why. First off, Carly. So many questions. So many this is questions. A fantastic sentence. Yeah. This is a great. It's, it, this it, it is does grammar not flow its, off the lips. That's for sure. You had we had to read this like on, three times. Yes, but that's why it's so good. Because if you read this, I'm gonna read it again. Ghost could sell more beer and wings, but Charlotte seems spooked. Here's why. The way that is constructed, it's almost passive aggressive. Like this is like an old couple being like, ah. The ghost could sell more beer and wings, but Charlotte was spooked. Like the guy is talking about his wife and the wife is like upset about this whole deal, but the husband's okay with it. And that's why I like this so much. It's almost like, you know, I'm the husband, Carly, Carly, Charlotte. It's like the ghost was selling more wings and beer, but like Charlotte didn't like that. So it spooked her. Here's why. It's like, so like. Uh, there's no the ghost being here is not the problem it's more of like charlotte's charlotte's the problem, the problem. charlotte's the problem not the ghost. i love exactly 100 this, this is made by an old person and that's why that's why i thought when i read this headline and the video afterwards is fan okay, okay. bring it up bring it up bring fantastic up. okay here we go so here we go so i'm gonna give you a little hint and then we're gonna get into this it's like a two minute video. So the ghost tours and haunted house draws thousands of tourists a year in Charleston and Savannah, which is weird how they said it that way. But anyway, Charlotte offers many haunted bars and restaurants, but experts in the paranormal say the city is lagging in its use of ghosts to sell beer and wings. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Public knowledge of haunted encounters is usually good for business. Said Tina R. Uh, Mick Sweeney, who founded the Charlotte Area Paranormal Society in 1999. Ooh, the founder. Ooh, that's pretty cool, right? Um, public knowledge of the haunted encounter is usually good for business, said Tina R. McShane, founder of the Turn. And people wanted to have an, an experience, she said. They see all the shows, so they think it might be cool to have their own ghost sightings. So we, we, <laughs> So, so what better way than to go somewhere that reports and only us can hear what we're hearing right now? <laughs> it is the most passive form of protest. Our Jojo's dog so is mad. very upset He's that we're so doing mad. this He's right now. He's upstairs, like nesting, like pawing at the floor so he can hear it right above Tommy's head. He's like this before he like circles because then he'll circle and then he'll scratch like three more times. Then what he'll is he circle. saying? Let's go to bed, guys. I'm so tired. <laughs> the stigma associated with paranormal has war has waned in recent years. And Mick Swain said, and people don't say she's crazy anymore. I can't read, by the way. No, where, do, where are you? But some businesses, some businesses are hesitant to embrace their ghosts. There's a well-known location in downtown Charlotte that has a ghost but they don't want to publicize it they don't want to talk about it mcsane said i don't really understand why i would think the type of business they are it would lead to an increase in revenue honestly this person's kind of smart and that kind of gets into the story here here we go right 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 the video is much better than this article tommy just attempted to read Beautiful. start it over start it over start it over Once Down with the Dead, we found two new places for ghost stories, including the Davidson Ice House and Boudreaux's in Noda. I ask the owner all the time, uh, you think it's haunted here? And he's like, no, I've been in here. First off, let's look at this fucker. Oh my gosh, I knew you were going to start dissecting this yeah, man. Yeah, we got to dissect this fucker. By his voice, I knew you were going to no, start dissecting this man. his face. You know what he reminds me of for some reason is Tucker and Dale. Yes, 100%. He's Tucker. Like, Tucker. It looks like he should have a cross for some reason. Like his, his this dimple. This dimple. That forehead in right there. In between his eye. For, for our podcast listeners, link in the episode description for this video. It's, it's priceless. That man's face has such depth. It, it, I want to paint it. I know. It is such a, a, it's beautiful. And like, 
it he has this dimple right here between his eye holes. I don't know what you call this right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, like his eyebrows right between his, yes. his eye holes. Really? Did you just say that? I said eye holes. He has this dimple right here between his eye holes, and it looks like there should be a cross. Like I thought, like he literally should have a tattoo of a cross right here. Oh my gosh, he he could he would do great things with, with picture, a neck tattoo. Picture his nose, a down neck here. tattoo. Yes, a yes. neck tattoo. But think about this: his oh, nose yeah. and his 100%. eyebrows is a cross. Yeah. And I oh, kept yeah, staring at there's a cross right there, and he's so passive about it. I don't yeah. know why that was uh, in my mind, but it was. I will continue the video now. Oh so no, I kind of see it. Now. I kind of see it. Yeah. Every second of every day. And, Turn up. Uh, I've never experienced anything. But then you talk to other people, especially like bar backs and stuff like that, that are here like four in the morning and they're like down the back hallway or in the back hallway in the kitchen. And they just, you know, now you get chills and stuff like that. I was in the kitchen in the very back corner where the, where the fryers are at. There he's working. And I look up and there's a door beside the bar and um, it was swinging open and closed. You know, I was like, well, maybe it might be just the air conditioner or the heat, you know. And then next thing you know, it's. <laughs> You know? So, um, another thing, we're going to do a fun little game real quick right here. It's called... Take a shot when he says, you know. You know. This guy will say, you know, a lot. I do love... I think it's been about four times at I, this point. I do love the aesthetic scene of this place. I like the wallpaper. I like everything. I like the guy. Honestly, if this guy was not working there to get me a drink, I would be upset. Because yeah. he should be like, he's a part of this building. By oh, the hell way. yeah. Yeah. He's a 100% part of this building. We're going to continue the video here. As soon as I quit thinking about that, the door would stop halfway open and slam open. So I was like, you know, forget this, I'm out of here, you know. You hear rumors about haunting stuff, and then there's something happening to you, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love it so Oh, my gosh. You it's, know. Like, it's like instead of punctuation in elementary school, yeah, like, he was here. taught to just say, you know, instead of it's, it's I'm out of here, period. I'm out of here, you know. Tucker, listen, you don't use the periods or the exclamation mark. You, you just say, you know, you know and, and they know I, you're done talking. I do love you know? where I stop this video, you know. <laughs> oh, that's scary. What that is that? face, you know. Is that a painting on the wall? That's a painting on the wall, you oh. know creepy you know look at those eyes you know it's like disapproval of your dog for shitting on the carpet you know mm, that is exactly what my face looks like after, after the dog poops on the carpet you know you know <laughs> We're gonna continue. you still mind that you know you know and i look down as the girl i was working with so open and closing the door on me like i peed my pants a little bit I miss <laughs> because of the rumor mill about this place being on you know and now, because of that, I'm still kind of scared. If you're not... Okay. I feel like they edited out the you know there. I, I do. Okay, again, what I love is, like, the way he said that was serious. Peed my pants a little bit. Dead Gotta pen. be honest with listen, you. Listen, listen, I shit myself a little bit there, and I had to go to work, you know? And like, that, that happened. I didn't bring an extra pair of pants, you know? Like, he was, like, 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 Kennyville, like, what's he called? Like, Ken... He's he was literally opening his heart to these people, yes. to these news people that are recording this video. He's literally opening his heart, but it's it's almost. I went to work, you know, comical. And I literally pissed myself. It's you just know? comical, like, where I, he's like I, pouring I out myself. his heart to these people. Letter kidding, by the way, is what I was thinking about. Anyway, keep going. You know, we're gonna finish it up now with the last piece of this this thing. You know. Oh my gosh! Stop. You take it too far. No. Far enough. You always take it too far. I scared you of some things in Ice House and I gave you chills. My general manager at the time, he heard this really loud crash and there was nothing. And so he's walking back to the office, passing the bathroom that he had just been in. He looks in and someone had taken a can of paint and just thrown it, splashed it all over the bathroom, in the toilet, on the floor, on the walls. And we had eight by 10 pictures of the original Ice House and the paint went around the pictures, not on the pictures and he found a paint can and it was completely sealed it's a hundred years old it's beautiful uh and it's haunted that was interesting that was really cool so now let's go back up to the name of this article which was what well first off, i just want to read it again uh, just do what i asked Okay, easy, Queen. Easy. We're gonna get there. But I like how like she's like, and there was paint thrown, but the lid was on it. 
I, I just, I'm sorry. That like, was where like, did the paint come from? <laughs> just, no, but the fact is she's like, like, listen, there was paint thrown, but when I went in there, the lid was on the paint. How did that happen? Right, Bitch, they put the lid back on. Like, why did back you go to like... sealed it back on. This has to be... Do listen, that. this has to be a ghost because Justin, who cleans the bathrooms, would not have just Opened had the this... paint can and then closed <laughs> the, the paint, paint can. can. Like, that does not happen. I don't know why I thought of Bob's Burgers right then, but it's like, it's like clearly this would not happen with our kids. Um, but anyway, again, the the article name right now, and I'm going to get it right up here for everyone to see. Carly... Ghosts could sell more beer and wings, but Charlotte seems spooked. Here's so now why. we know Charlotte is not a woman. Charlotte is a location. Mm -hmm. And now the location is spooked, meaning haunted. So again, please. Ghosts could sell more beer and wings, but everyone, Charlotte seems spooked. Everyone, Here's why. Let us know in the uh, comment section down below. Do you know of a place that's spooked? We would love to love the opportunity to interview someone about their haunted location we are trying to get some people on the show actually to actually tell about their specific spooky ghost stories but also of any kind of locations or any haunted things that have actually happened um again link in the episode description everything down below we will have a couple more episodes probably dropping faster than once a week because it's october so i know it's a little scattered right now in october that's because we're trying to pump out more episodes we Doing do the best we can we do have a huge october special that will be dropping yep and we also have a couple of really really good longer stories that'll be happening too and i'm very proud of them but i'm not gonna lie okay don't get i need to hint i need to hint 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 okay, okay okay europe historian lore think of anything that has to do with europe historic lore and halloween and that might help you i'm Ooh. that's it that's it all right until next time <laughs> i'm thomas aarons I'm Carly Bird. We'll see you next time in Spirits and Ghost Stories. Bye. Bye.